Okay, here we go again, and let's see if this time we can get Kobe with us. And thank you for your patience, for those of you who are in already. Connecting, yay! Okay, Kobe. Yes. Yay, we did it! So as I was saying, Kobe is an Instagram Live virgin. So <laughs> it is a great honor <laughs> to I have you. The, the first Instagram Live with me, uh, I'm also new after this. I think it's my third one. Um, but this is the beauty of, um, of technology and all the things we can do to still stay connected. I love it. Yep. So, Kobe, um, as we were discussing, um, uh, I was uh, telling um, our audience that um, Douglas Elliman started a campaign about what's the meaning of home. And it made me think about how it changed today with what we are experiencing. And I personally used to think, or the first words that came to mind were love and family. But now since this started with, since this coronavirus situation, the first word that comes to mind is safety. And I think that I'm not alone with that, that a lot of people have that uh, feeling, that impression now. So I wanted, the first question that I have for you is um, how do you uh, think that this need for safety at home will impact the future of architecture? My apologies, the sound here in this section got very bad for a few minutes. So um, I'm going to tell what Kobe responded. And basically he said that what we will be seeing is the incorporation of existing technologies that will become more common. For example, the use of copper, which is a material that kills viruses and germs and has been used for ages, will be uh, reincorporated into our buildings and homes. Also, the use of ultraviolet lights to clean the air, and also smart technologies that can detect when a person, for example, is having some difficulty breathing or their blood pressure is going above a certain um, measure or any, anything that can put the health of the person while we are sleeping in danger will automatically connect with emergency services. And that has, is something that exists already, but has been very controversial because it has to do with with privacy, but um, given the experience that we've had, many of us will realize that saving lives is more important than um, the need for privacy. So we may be seeing a tendency towards incorporating more of that technology. The market, the, market, the direction will be much better. Um, it, it's going to be a much healthier environment um, to do and it's going to be a much better environment um, for us to design within. And it's already started. Um, the buildings that we're doing right now already have that in them, and people have had those safety lines in the buildings, but now, more so than ever before, people want more. And more just means better, and more means better technology, and more means better quality. And that's really what it is about, because the more you can provide that sort of a service, the more you can provide that sort of a comfort, um, you will be so much more successful. And successful means that the people who live and work and study in, the, in your buildings are healthier. And we have the technology and it needs to be improved. We have the technology and it needs to become more efficient. We have the technology and the knowledge, we just need to implement it. Um, it's it's in, in many hospitals, whether they're luxury hospitals or high-end hospitals or cutting edge medical buildings and or even field um, hospitals have this kind of a technology. It's just that now it's going to be implemented. And the reason it will be implemented is because it's going to be demanded. It is a standard. It's, it's, look, I'm 58 years old. When, we, when I started to drive, there was a stick shift instead of automatic and the windows, I would have to crank them up and down. As time went by, the demand changed people said we want to have automatic and we want to have power windows those are the kind of things that are now standard in any car it has nothing to do with high-end or luxury or or trucks every kind of vehicle offers that that's what so, we're doing. so um, you, you you think that this is going to be changed in the code 
It's going to oh, be something that's oh, mandatory yeah. and part of the building codes. Oh yes, the codes will change to accommodate that. This is this is a watershed situation. This is the same as what we had when we had Hurricane Andrew here in Florida. The code changed. This is what happens when you have uh, people becoming um, aware of global warming and sustainability and resiliency and environmental um, demand on buildings to be more um, efficient. It changed. That's where LEED became. And now everybody knows what LEED is, right? But 15 years ago, 10 years ago, when I was working in Abu Dhabi and in Saudi Arabia, it was just coming online in those locations. So this is what you are looking at. You're looking at a watershed situation that is, I think it's a positive. I think that this event on the long run um, to us as a community and a society is a positive. It, it will bring us more closer together. What, what it has done to bring us all closer together now um, is, is very interesting and I think it's very inspirational. I think that the dynamic of the opportunities for people to work together and to um, learn off of each other um, it right now is a very, um, it's a prelude situation to what is really coming down the line, which is going to be, I think, very thoughtful and very comprehensive on an international level. Um, I think there's going to be a cleanup of understanding of how it is that we live and how it is that we perform within the buildings because now we're all inside our buildings. We're all cubed up in our little homes, in our little apartments, in our little condos. Uh, guess what? That's also going to change because people are going to be more cognizant that as time goes by, we are aligned to be spending more time in those spaces and those spaces will be, if you will, designed in a more proper fashion. Okay, um, going back to, you mentioned at the beginning when this, we had a little bit of issue with the sound, something about copper. Um, how does that, uh, I, I didn't get exactly what copper does for the safety or for uh, the chemical environment in homes. So when you touch uh, a surface, um, copper historically has been a very, very, um, a sustainable and resilient material that people use in order to prevent uh, the transfer and uh, um, mobilization and uh, encroachment of germs, of uh, uh, microbes, of uh, viruses. So it had, historically, people could not necessarily wash their dishes or their um, a cups of water. So what they would do is they would use materials that they know that historically over, uh, you know, the human civilizations were um, good for them. So whether it's the Indian uh, civilization or the Chinese or Western civilization used to use copper um, cups and mugs and silverware um, because that is a material uh, that um, does not allow for um, germs and microbes to grow or to multiply or to transfer. So. When we started to make buildings, um, we knew that. So that's why in many buildings, especially older buildings, you have copper plumbing. The reason you have copper plumbing is because then the water that runs through those pipes cleanses itself. It has an opportunity to restore itself. Um, what happened is that we decided somewhere along the line that we want to use PVC. Um, PVC is not the same as um, is that the PVC is very important um, to use, but not for water transfer. So water transfer within copper is, is a very healthy material to use. And that's why we use that on um, a, a handles. That's why we use it on door handles. Um, that's why we use it also on, uh, on uh, plumbing. Um, okay. and, I know, and I know also that we missed some questions. People were asking some questions. Yes, we'll, we'll do in a few minutes, we'll open it to questions. So, um, but uh, it's very interesting. I knew, I've, I've seen the copper mugs, but I never knew the, the, the science behind it. Yes. Um, so on another note, um, we were seeing a, a, a global trend towards microspaces, uh, especially millennials, younger people that, um, 
they were not interested in having huge spaces. They preferred to have a great location with a microspace and a lot of amenities. Uh, do you think that this experience of having to spend so much time isolated and in your own space will interrupt or change that trend? Yes, I think that what happens now is that people um, are, are understanding that it's not the size that matters, but it's the quality. It's not the quantity, but it's really the, the quality of the space. It is, in a way, it's um, when you fly in an airplane, right? When they give you, uh, uh, let's say, a business class or a first class seat, where they know you will be on that plane for eight to 10 to 12 hours, you have everything ergonomically and everything at your tips, and it's much more efficient. The same thing goes for, you know, let's say we do a luxury hotel or a luxury resort. We can design a beautiful, appointed, built-out um, suite that has all of your um, desires and all your needs there, um, whether it's food and beverage or whether it is for um, a sensing your medical status or whether it is to feel um, if I need to at night to cool your bed or warm your bed, um, whether I need to turn the lights off or we'll turn them on automatically, all of those things are going to are, are now becoming a reality more so than ever before. So it becomes more connected to you. Um, it, it becomes uh, more ergonomically correct. It becomes more it becomes more healthy. It's more about the wellness of it. You are being designed into a comprehensive space that meets all of the criteria to not only make you comfortable, but also to sustain you and, and make you feel and know that you are being monitored in a healthy fashion. For example, when you sleep um, today, we design into the spaces of the beds so that we know if your heartbeat is too high or too low, if your blood pressure is, is too high. If, if many people die in their sleep, right? And when they die in their sleep, there are alerts that can happen so that uh, 911 or, or, or ambulances can be um, brought to you because many people today, whether in their apartment or in their house, are not necessarily with other people, they're alone. And, and it creates an opportunity for us with the technology that we have to immediately make people aware of that, right? So um, right now we're, we're focusing on, on, on a corona and, and what that does to you and how it affects your lungs and your breathing. But many, many people also die um, of um, uh, sudden heart attacks and strokes in the middle of the night. And we have the technology and the ability today to monitor that um, and, and to control that. And that's really what it is that we're designing for today. It's not only about how beautiful it looks, not how comfortable it only is, but it's also what it does to make you um, a better individual, to improve your quality of, of life and to improve your quantity of life. Um, so it gets back to the quality of the space and the way it's designed on multi-levels. Not only what it looks like, not only psychologically, not only emotionally, but also how, how it interacts with who you are as an individual and, and feels you and breathes you and understands your blood pressure and your, um, whether it's handicap um, assistance or whether it's you need assistance in seeing things. You know, there's a lot of technology that comes into that and it's readily available, but it wasn't so much demanded. What you will see now, it will be more demanded than ever before. And look, I'm in my 50s, but people are coming on board now in their late teens, in their 20s, and in their 30s. Um, they, they will be demanding it a lot more than ever before. Because once the demand is created, this is what this watershed event has done, it's created the event, it will create the demand. And when the demand is created, there's no going back. It gets back to the story that I just told you about the automatic cars with the power windows. Once it becomes a standard, that's where we are. Going. Everybody has to have it. It's sure. A, it's standard of life, yes. Okay. And um, what changes in particular do you envision in buildings, in condos? So basically, if you will, um, the buildings themselves, you know, whether you're in the 18th century, in the 19th century, or the 15th century, it's the same, you know, volume that houses you, right? whether it's an igloo or a teepee, or it's a monastery, um, those are volumes that we as architects or interior designers, we design the indoor, and if you're a landscape architect, we design the outdoor spaces to protect you and let you do what it is that you like to do, what it is that you, you desire to do, whether it's to study, 
um, whether it's to um, spend time with people or like now we're spending time talking and, and there are other people joining us. The space that you're in should feel for you like it's part of you, like it's part of your soul, like it's part of your energy, like that space understands you. That's where we are designing now. We're designing the spaces so they're integrated into our personality, our character, and more important into who we are, not only of how we think and how we envision the art and the culture, but also health-wise, the wellness part. Um, it will sense our temperature, it will sense how um, a, our blood flows, our, it will sense us and it will understand us. You know, in a way, um, in, 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 in the good old days, which are not that far away, if you have pets or animals, um, dogs, cats, um, horses, they sense if there is something wrong with you, right? I mean, if you have a dog and sometimes the dog would go to your knee and would lick your knee and you would understand why they're licking your knee, it's because there is something potentially that is becoming, evolving in, in a negative fashion into your knee. Um, and, and that's what you need, I think, to pay attention to. Now, what we are doing as architects, as designers, um, which is part of it is, is part of the technology and understanding the technology, is we becoming much more sophisticated and cultured into where it is that we are going with that. And we are implementing as a standard in our buildings, uh, the monitors and the sensors, they make you part of your habitable living environment. You will become much more in tune with it. Some people will have a problem with it. You know, Patricia, they'll say, oh my God, Kobe, you're breaking into my privacy. I don't want people to know. Um, look, I don't think that there is such a thing as privacy anymore. I don't think that anything is really private anymore. I think that by using these devices that we have, um, whether we like it exactly. or not, if it's not Apple or Google, and if it's not the government of China or the government of the United States, somebody else will steal it. Somebody else will know it. Somebody else will understand it. So if, you, if you're concerned about people seeing whether you have um, an irregular heartbeat or cancer, um, then disconnect from it. Um, but the majority of the population will desire to be part of this um, and will want to know that when they go to sleep, um, if God forbid exactly. they go through that event, right, which is eight hours for most people on, on a daily basis, that they have the ability to wake up, right? That's how we say the prayer in the morning. Thank you, God, for, you know, giving me my breath back. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that if we have, whether it's the bed or the chair or the room itself, that can sense how we're breathing and how we are um, sweating and what our temperature is and how our lungs are functioning, I think that is very, very critical and very, very important for us as individuals to have. And that's what buildings are becoming more so than ever before. It's not and, just about the design. And in the balance, when you put in a, on a scale about the importance of privacy versus the importance of preserving life, I think it's kind of obvious the result. Um, on another topic, balconies. They have never been so relevant as today. Uh, we are seeing on Instagram and everywhere on social media uh, videos of people singing in their balconies, getting married in their balconies, um, making concerts and dances and all sorts of uh, um, activities because it's, uh, for a lot of people, the only way of uh, stepping outside. So, um, do you see any changes? And I was very inspired by the video that I used to, to announce this live that you did, uh, that compilation of balconies. Uh, do you see any changes in that area coming up? Yes, the balconies uh, in, in this event now, um, what it has become, it's become the front porch. It's where we can go out and we can wave hi to people, we can express ourselves, we can sing, we can dance, we can be part of a community, we can all sing together, we can all raise flags together. We can, be, we can congregate um, with other um, strangers through our balconies. Um, and by the way, it's not just a balcony. Romeo and Juliet balconies have been there forever, right? Uh, you have always had that opportunity. And today in Wynwood 25, for example, instead of just having the balcony, what we did is we slid the glass door open and we have a little rail so you don't fall out. But your indoor space becomes part of the street environment. So you are part of the, um, the urban in fabric environment. And that's really what is important. Whether it's a balcony, a balconette, a rooftop, a terrace, 
um, or it's even your space itself, by opening it up from the inside to the outside is the key, not just having a little window. Um, because then the people can see you fully and they can appreciate you and you can see other people. And it, be, it makes you part of the environment. Balconies, as we know them, are growing and have become really very an integral part of the community. And it's not just to have the balcony, but it's to let the outdoor spaces in and to let the, the spaces and, and to let the whole community see who you are. And I think that's very important. I think it's not only humbling, but I think it's also very um, cultural to be part of the neighborhood. You can easily close it off, put blind cheers and have your privacy. But when you want to interact with other people in our buildings, whether they're in Miami or Minneapolis, whether they're in New York or in Geneva, and you are close to each other, you can see each other, you can speak to each other. We're just coming back to that stage the way we used to be um, in the way we grew up, whether you grew up in, in Italy or you grew up in the south of France or you grew up in Israel or you grew up in, in uh, Rio de Janeiro, you were able to step out into your balcony and terrace and, and yell at the neighbor across the street and say, do you have some milk? Oh, but yet here, catch the string. I'm gonna, we're going to stretch a string across to hang our underwear out there to dry. Um, those days, obviously, are over, but the communication that we have today to tie us together the balconies became, if you will, a very interesting and a very important stage set. They became like a stage, like the bima, where you can come out and you can be in front of everybody. It's like when you go to church and the Pope steps up on, onto the um, podium and he is or she is raised up in the air for everybody to see. The same effect happens here. And that is a very, very important effect because it immediately lets the community, the neighborhood, um, tie each other together. They can share experiences, they can share thoughts, they can share music. Most important, um, it, they can share life together. Um, and that's very, very critical. It's taking, th it's taking the inside out um, and it's really looking at it in a completely different way. And um, that, I think that is a very um, inspiring and I think it's also a prelude to the way design will continue to be, where in the future, if you will, um, we will have more and more of these outdoor concerts and outdoor events um, where if people want to, they can step into the room, into the balcony, into the terrace, and be part of the um, ongoing events. Good. So um, let's take a few questions from the audience. Let's, um, as someone says, you're giving good food for the mind. Um, Listings of moats and shelters was brilliant. Uh, anybody has a question that you want to submit before we end? Uh, someone said high-end homes are mostly done in copper. Fascinating, like this whole thing about copper. Copper was a big hit, Kobe. Uh, what kind of changes in your opinion will happen to the real estate market because of pandemia? I think we are, you already touched on that. Um, someone mentioned home property will go up for sure. People will want to have their own private space rather than sharing in a building. Any comment, Kobe, about that? Yeah, look, I think that we are facing now a complete change in our life. I think that there will be um, basically trials and tribulations of the financial market. Um, but at the end of the day, we will continue. We will continue to live our life. We have in the past and we'll continue to do so into the future. This is just a stepping stone. We've had plagues in our life before. We've had problems. We've had issues. This is just a stepping stone to where it is that we will be in the near future. I'm very optimistic about it. I don't think that this is um, something that is going to change the world where it will um, be completely different. I think that it will be an inspiration for us to make ourselves and our life better. I think it's an inspiration for us to make who we are as a civilization, as a, as a human race, better. I'm looking at it in, in an interesting fashion. You know, people say to me, oh, Kobe, what do you think um, it, this means to us? You know, it, 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 it's going to ruin us. I don't think so. I think on the contrary, I think this is an opportunity that is very unique. I think it's an opportunity that's very special. 
look, I have, um, when I look at this as an opportunity, what will become to the teens, to the 20s and 30s, I think this is a learning curve. I think that people had arguably um, kind of a soft life, and now they have an opportunity to see um, kind of what a shock of reality is. Um, I, I, in a way, this is a blessing in disguise for people um, in my business to appreciate what it is that um, we need to do, what it is that we are going through. Um, life safety, um, environment, um, disease, um, those are things that are very, very critical and they need to be addressed. They need to be looked at. They need to be respected. We have done it in the past. We have dealt with it in the past. We have looked at it, whether it was the plagues or whether it was measles or whatever, whatever it was. We always had it, but we haven't had anything in the past decades. And you know what? We relax about it. Um, and I think it's, it, it, as I would say, it's, it's, it's a good morning um, a opportunity for us all because I think it's very important for us to see and appreciate that nature controls us. We don't control nature. And people don't understand that, um, or, or I'm talking about the majority of the population has decided to take a vacation from it. And they decided, you know what, it's not so important. Well, guess what? It is critical. And that's what we're going to now. And I think for that, it will make us better. It'll make us a better source. It'll make us um, better uh, people. More aware. So, um, Kobe, the next questions, we'll have to stick to maybe 30 second answers or so, so that we have uh, room for, for taking quite a few. So someone asked, I saw a question asking if, you, if we will be seeing more home offices. Um, I think that home offices and, and are, have always been um, important. We have designed home offices in most of our projects, whether it's a closet that pulls out and it gets built out, or it's a luxury office where people can bring their friends and their family to see their trophies and their awards and, and, and share that experience. But at the end of the day, we as um, humans, we like to be with other humans. And so we like to go out on the street. We like to have a coffee with and see other people. They don't have to be our friends and our family, even if they're strangers. People love to watch other people, right? You'll go to Rockefeller Center in New York City and somebody put an ice rink in the middle and people pay to be on the ice rink so that other people can watch them, right? And, and this interaction of seeing and watching people is very critical. Now, what happens is that we all need our privacy, we all need our seclusion to put our thoughts and our feelings and our emotions together and, and to grow. Um, and that, that private time um, is very critical. Um, but at the end of the day, I do believe that um, people will need to come together. I think that people will want to be together. Um, and it's how we started you and I, Patricia, right here. Um, I have, uh, we're an essential business. I offered my people, I said, do you want to stay or do you want to go home? Most said, you know, I'd like to stay here, but I can't. My kids don't have school. I have to, I have to um, take care of my family, my um, elder parents. But those who could, uh, most of them stayed here to work in the office and to share the experience on a daily basis with other people. They really like it. They really enjoy it. Okay, so we will go back to offices as, as before. You, you don't in, uh, anticipate a, a change in, in the request for home offices. I think, I think that the change will be in how it is that we use like the technology today. We can work remote. Remote was always kind of like, oh, we can work remote. But now we see that remote is really a necessity at certain situations. And so it, remote will, be, will become more, um, more sophisticated, more cultured, and it will become part of life. But it will not overtake um, the macro or the experience of people going to an office or working together or going to a Starbucks and all connecting to the Wi-Fi so they can do their work or their homework, if you will, um, in, in a shared experience. I think that we are um, a specimen of, of, of um, creatures that likes to share our experience with other people. I'm the majority, right? Some yeah, people we're, are loners. We're, we're, social, we're, social. we're social animals. We are social animals on, on the most part, yes. And, if, and as I like to study, you know, apes and, and, uh, and, and chimpanzees and I really enjoy that a lot, and I really see the similarities between us, right? 
And so I think it's an opportunity for us to revisit it and relook at it. But, you know, Patricia, it's interesting. It's, I think this is an interesting lesson to us as a civilization um, on a macro level. East, West. I mean, yeah, we can say, oh, the, the flu came from, from China or it came from a lab in China. That's irrelevant on, on a macro how it was created. Whether if you want to believe that the Chinese wanted to kill us or put us bankrupt, uh, God bless America. Fine. We will, we will succeed and we'll overcome it. But it still has a positive macro lesson here that we, need, I think, have all learned it. Um, and we've had um, flus and we've had um, diseases that came from certain locations in, in the Far East or Africa and we're able to contain them. But here, because of the flying um, abilities of the whole world, yeah, how Spain and Italy and, and, and the United States in certain locations got so contaminated, if you will, so quick. Um, it's, it's a lesson how connected we really are, right? The globalization, I don't care if it's the United States of America or whether it's, it's the European Union, makes no difference what labels you put on it. We're all so very well connected. East, West, North, South, rich, poor, whatever, black, white, Orient makes no difference. We're so connected now, more so than ever before, that there are no borders. Um, so right. nobody, 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 nobody has a protection. Nobody can say I'm an isolationist and I, this has nothing to do with me. That does not exist. You can say so, you can think so, but that is not the reality in, in exactly. Um And that's what is happening more so than ever before. We're all more so connected, and, and this shows how connected we are. And I think that pe some people have talked about it, like people have talked about like this doctor and that doctor, Fucci and so forth. Those, those are just vehicles. Those individuals are just vehicles to the macro thought process that's going to change. When people were able to go to the moon, whether they were Russian or American, all right, now everybody can go to the moon, right? You have privately held companies that go into space on an, on an ongoing basis. This is going to be the norm. This is the game changer. And that's why... I think this is an opportunity. I think it's a huge opportunity. People say, oh, it's going to kill the restaurant business. Oh, it's going to, no. It will come back. It's, a, it's, it's not a, exactly. Once this uh, virus is contained, everything will come back. I just hope that we all maintain this awareness that it's a global uh, world, that we are all one that it's not a cliche when we say we're all one because anything that happens has an effect on everybody else. So I couldn't and, and agree more with you. You, you are hundred percent correct. And, and not only are we so connected now more so than ever before, but we also have the ability to know what's going on on a minute by minute basis, on a second by second basis. Nothing at the end of the day is going to happen anywhere in the world with the majority of the population seeing it or feeling it or hearing it. There's so much information that is available that we don't even have the time to absorb it. There's no time for any individual or any group or any community or any society or any country to absorb that information um, on a regular basis. They need time to absorb it. And that's really what we will be facing next. So last question. Um, what is your vision I'm seeing here from Benjamin? What is your vision of Miami in the next five to 10 years? Look, my vision for, if you want to focus on Miami, it's, it's that Miami is the capital city of South and Central America. And when I say Central America, I'm including the lower 48, United States of America in it. Um, I think that you have, um, it's the only, Florida is the only state in the lower 48 that has um, subtropical weather. And Miami is located in a very important location, strategically, physically, um, politically, but most important, um, geographically, in the people that it connects together. Um, and I have had the luxury of being in Miami since 1988. And when I came here, it was mostly um, New Yorkers and people from the Northeast on a fixed income came here for retirement. So they had no venue or money to really spend. Um, and or it was drug money in Miami Vice and Scarface days. But now today, um, the people still come from the Northeast, but they come here for other reasons. And people still come from South and Central America, but they come here for other reasons. Really, Miami um, and the surrounding area where there's Fort Lauderdale and Palm Beach have become a destination that is macro. 
Mexico is using Miami as 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 a pad for growth, economic growth. In an equal manner, it is using Dallas, Texas, and Houston, right, or El Paso on the Rio Grande, and they cross Moares. The connectivity is so much greater, um, and. And, and so there are no borders. Uh, there's no borders whether it's an ocean. There's no border if it's if it's if it's if it's a wall. And there's no border if it's a Rio Grande, which is not a Grande, and it's certainly not even a Rio. It's just a little creek. But we, as as people, we are so much more connected than ever before, and we'll continue to be. And and I think that Miami is in a very very unique opportunity because people like the tropical outdoor life. They like to be in the environment. They like to be in nature. Now, some people do obviously will want, still want the four seasons. They'll still want the, the, the change of weather, and they'll want to go skiing in the mountains. Um, but the majority of the population will want to live in a more um, a properly um, adjusted climate um, that Florida offers. And in, if you want to live in an urban area where you're looking to do business and culture and medicine and genetics and universities and expansion and of, of, of what we do as, as humans, Miami is arguably the best location to be in Florida for that. Tampa um, is and St. Petersburg are very busy right now, um, and I think they will continue to be. But I think that overall Florida, just being the peninsula it is, between the Gulf of Mexico and, and the, and the um, tropical uh, Gulf streams, um, will continue to be a very desired destination. Um, and that Abs change. Absolutely. So we've come to the end of this live session. And thank you, thank you, Kobe. I could listen to you for the rest of the day because you're such a good speaker and, and the information is, is amazing. Um, you have a great mix of the... Um, technical side from as an architect, but you also have a very profound view of life as a human being. So um, we all really appreciate your sharing this time. And uh, to everybody that's, uh, that has joined us, have an amazing uh, Friday, a great weekend. Stay strong, stay safe. We will go through this. Uh, together as a community, and we will emerge stronger than ever. God Love bless you. you. Love you too. Bye. Bye, -bye.